Yes guys, we did it. After over 5 years, I have finally reached a thousand subscribers. I can't understand why you all decided to subscribe to my channel. Honestly, I don't consider my content to be subscribe worthy, if that is even a word. But all I want to say is thank you guys. Thank you all sincerely for supporting me along the way. It really motivates me to create more content. I know a thousand subscribers may not seem like much, but I want you to imagine something for a moment. Imagine a thousand people gathered in a room. It does feel like a lot more now, doesn't it? Arknight is my all-time favorite gacha game. It is the only game where I've never missed a single day logging in. The story is very believable and well written, and the gameplay is fun and diverse. The time I've invested in the game can be very short or very long, depending on what I really want, and I have barely felt any FOMO throughout playing the game. I like the game so much that I started creating content about it. Although not very consistently, I still don't quite know what sort of content I really want to make in the future, so most of the time I just go with the flow. But how did I end up here? And when did I start it with Arknights? Now sit down and have some cookies, because I will be telling you my experience of playing Arknights. Most of you guys watching this video know me as Plus Minus. I mean, it is my channel name after all, but some people know me as No One. Years ago, my channel used to upload content about a different game called Metal Slug Attack. No One was one of the characters in the game. It was a niche tower defense game. Imagine Battle Cats, but with PvP content. Anyways, back then I used to upload niche content about the game. I was the equivalent of a niche knight tuber in the Arknight community, because I only used units from one faction to beat meta decks. With this content and a consistent uploading schedule, I gained a fair amount of viewers. I uploaded roughly two videos a month, and I became a recognized part of the community and met some of the best friends I could have imagined on the internet. It was a pretty good time. But the good times didn't last, because in actuality, Metal Slug Attack is a terribly designed gacha game. It has a very fast power creep, an unforgiving gacha system, and a harsh resource grind. Many PvP strategies are unfun to play against, or just outright broken. The amount of resources needed to max out what you want from an event is so high that you have to skip events to store your stamina points to complete a single event. I won't be going into further detail, but despite all that I kept playing the game for over 4 years. You may wonder what made me stick with the game for so long. Well, it's mostly because of the community. To all of you magnificent bastards, it was a really great time. But eventually the negatives outweighed the positives, and so I quit. It was a really hard decision for me and I didn't know what to do with my channel after quitting. It was like a void phase during that time. I tried uploading other content, but none of it was really enjoyable for me. I moved on and one day I saw an Arknights ad on YouTube. You know, one of those weird mobile game ads. On the same day I also saw Connor's video about the game, so I decided to give it a try. At first I thought it was okay. It's just like Azure Lane. You just let the game autoplay on its own after clearing it once. So I treated it like an AFK game. I logged in, did my dailies, spent all my stamina and logged off day in and day out. I did that for quite a long time and yes I didn't play most of the events at that time. I think the first event I saw when I started out was the god event. I was actually considering quitting because back then I didn't quite get what was so fun about the game. I really thought it was just Bloons TD with uh, waifus and husbandos. But there was no reason to quit for me. I didn't hate the game or anything. The characters looked cool, the VAs were good, and the game seemed overall very generous. And best of all, I didn't have to spend much time doing my dailies, so I kept playing it on the side while also playing other games. Then one day, just with one event, my perception towards Arknights changed.
It was CC5 that really triggered my interest in Arknights. I was surprised by how good the music was. And the game mode reminded me a little of that event in Genshin where you can set up your own difficulty for defeating the boss. At that time I thought my level should be high enough because I also had a handful of E2 operators, so I decided to give it a try. And I failed. And I failed. And I failed. Countless times. No matter what I did, I failed regardless. It made me furious, and I thought I wouldn't beat the stage without spending on the game. And I was very close to quitting Arknights at that time. Then I asked around and one of my friends sent me a guide. It was someone who beat the stage with a risk 18 difficulty and only using the free operators you have from the start. Wow, so I just sucked at the game. That was the point where I started to try and understand the game. I experienced firsthand how you can beat every content without the need to spend. I was genuinely surprised by the fact that spending wouldn't necessarily make the game easier, so I looked up operator information on wiki and read beginner guides because obviously I consider myself as one. And then I started to read the story. Sorry, what, what, why are you skipping the story, bro? Well, I, I just, I, you know, I, I want to play, I, I want to see explosions, I want to commit war crimes, and I hate dialogues. But, but Arknights has really good story, just just read, you goddamn global player. But but this old whale, she has been talking all day long, and I, I don't even know when she's going to take a break. I mean, how can you guys bear with that? Monster. It took me a while to really get into the lore of Arknights, but once I got into it, I really enjoyed it. It's a perfect mixture of sci-fi with fantasy element in an apocalyptic world. A place where people get rock cancer, which is incurable by the way, and it decreases the lifespan of the infected, but it gives them the ability to use magic without the need of a staff. Um, how do people get rock cancer, you ask? Well, if they get in contact with the mineral called Originium. People might ask, well, just don't get in contact with it, lol. Well, too bad, but Originium is a very important resource in the world of Arknights. It's the equivalent of oil and coal in our world. For them, it's the most vital energy resource for every device and machinery. So that means Originium is also being industrialized. All I said is just the tip of the iceberg. The entirety of Arknight's lore is so vast and complex. It is deeply entangled with every character in the game. No matter how irrelevant they might be in a gameplay perspective, some characters' bio are so complex, people could write an entire essay about them. Wait, someone actually did that? And so I delved deeper into the game's story, getting to know the operators better by reading their records. With over a hundred different operators in the game, it's very impressive how each one is unique from both gameplay and design perspective. Some of my favorite operators are Mudrock, La Pluma and Posyomka. Yeah, call me a weirdo or whatever you want, but these operators have become more than just employees of Rhode Island to me. They are family. I initially thought I came to the game just for waifu collecting, but the game gave me something I didn't know I was seeking. It was an unexpected self-discovery. The game gave me a close understanding of so many characters to the point where I wish I could just get isekai into the world of terror to live and breathe as the doctor, sharing hardship with my fellow operators and enjoy and happy moments with them. I mean, don't tell me you wouldn't desire the same. All in all, the game has really impressive world building. I could go on for hours about it, but it's not really the topic of this video. It's because I enjoy Arknights so much that I decided to focus my content on it. Oh, and I almost forgot, I wouldn't be able to make this video without their support. Here's a quick commercial from today's sponsor. RhineLab, the leading company of cutting edge technology from Colombia. Since our inception, RhineLab has always been committed to advancing the frontiers of science and technology to improve the quality of life for all. 
founded by the prominent scientists of Columbia, Dr. Kirsten Wright and Saria. Our company actually had a humble beginning. Throughout hard work, Ryanab has been at the forefront of groundbreaking research and development for years. Our team of expert researchers and engineers has dedicated their lives to solving some of the world's most pressing challenges, from developing new treatments for oripathy to creating sustainable energy resource. Now we are inviting you to join us in our mission to create a better tomorrow by investing in Rhinelab's stock market. You can be part of the exciting development and progress we are making every day. Rhinelab, innovation for a better tomorrow. Okay, so now let's talk about design. At the start, I never really took Arknight's brilliant design for granted. It never struck me how little most designs were revealing in comparison with the characters of many other gacha games. On top of that, most designs are more focused on a way broader storytelling and world building than just the characters themselves within a vacuum. Let's take a look at Saria. Her design is notable for its use of strong geometric shapes, which convey a sense of strength, stability and resilience. The angular lines of her suit and shield suggest a pragmatic approach to combat, while the sharp and calm eyes emphasize her toughness and readiness for battle. The shape language of Sadria's design described her as a dependable character, someone who can be counted on to hold the line and defend her allies no matter what. This is perfectly reflected in her skill set that can protect her allies from harm. Her armor and shield which have a simple yet elegant pattern of X shapes and squares, further reinforces her role as a steadfast defender. The character's shape language is telling you that she cannot be messed around with and she's just as stubborn as a wall. Now that I have talked enough about one character design, let me tell you that her design is also connected to two other characters. Saria's close relationship with Ifrit and Silence is hinted at her design, particularly in the small details of her accessories. Take a closer look at Saria's belt. Can you see the feather? This one is from Silence. You can see the same feather on Ifrit's art as well. This is a small detail that tells an entire story about the relationship between these three characters. Okay, all I want to say is that Arknight has great character design. I mean, just just look at Susie, bro. I mean, on, on first glance, anyone would think that she's just your average shy doggo girl. But she's more than that. She's someone who cannot control her art very well, which can be seen in her E2 art. Her nervous but still determined expression and the electric power around her, as well as the chaotic background all indicates that despite her weaknesses, she is still trying her best to become a stronger individual. Susie is just such a cute and wholesome character. I mean, I would never imagine anyone would think that her design is just hypersexualization for the sake of. Now that I have said about my appreciation for the character design, I think I can talk about my general experience with every class. Let's start with Vanguard. I think vanguards are pretty much your startup operators, they are easy to learn and easy to use even though Hypergriff doesn't really tell you how to use them specifically. I was lucky with Backpipe at the start, my first vanguard was Siege and she helped me a lot when I started with the game. Then later on I got Flagged, then they pretty much showed me what true DP printing machine looks like and I haven't touched Siege ever again. Sorry, Silent Spirit. Okay, next class is Guard. Well, they are pretty basic to me as well. I actually got thorns quite early on in the game, but if it were not for my friend telling me how good he is, I probably would have let him collect dust. And if it was not for the fact that I watched a ton of Killstim videos, I probably wouldn't have leveled Melantha as well. Lapland was such a bless because she just outright countered all those explosive spiders, even later on in the game, she can just hard carry stages where I would usually just horribly fail. And then we have those two abominations, Surtle and Silver Ash. Both literally just unga bunga the heck out of every enemy. I think I don't even need to say more. Okay, next up is Defender. I never really get into enjoying playing Defenders until later on. I think it really started with Nian and Saria that I started trying out Defenders. 
Saria showed me how much of an unbreakable wall she can become, before that I never even eat to any defender, though my favorite defender will always be Mudrock. Not because of her look, because of her armor. Maybe I'm one of the few individuals who enjoys armor over revealing appearance, but I think it's a nice change to have in a gacha game. Also, her sound effects are just so good, so satisfying. I could hear her bonks all day long. Now that we are done with the basic close range class, let's start with the first range class, Sniper. I have a special liking for Sniper. I even try to do only Sniper runs every time a new event is around. One of the reasons I enjoy Sniper so much is because it is still the most basic way to play a tower defense. And I think it feels nostalgic to play Arknights that way. Also, some of my favorite operators are Sniper, like Posionka, Blue Poison, April, W, and last but not least, Child. Okay, next class is Caster. So, about Caster, I started with Amiya, just like anyone else in the game, then I got Kyobe and I enjoyed Kyobe, I gave her cookies when I get back home, I pet her, and I tell her that I love her, it was a really good time. I could always rely on her taking care of those tanky enemies, but one day things changed. He, he took my Kyobe away and enslaved me, telling me to use him instead. My, my caster experience was kind of weird. I know it's not right to compare a single target caster with a chain caster, but in most stages I ended up having only one spot for the caster, and in majority of the times I decided to play Passenger instead. Well, at least I can proudly say that I'm one of those people who got him before knowing he's getting a really good buff and used him way before he even got any modules. Alright, alright, next class is Medic. Um, I love Silence, she is my favorite Medic in the game and I'm happy that she will get an altar. Nightingale is a pretty good AoE medic to me, but that's basically it, and she can bait some enemies with her cage. And Ex-Wife is not a medic. Okay, next class is Specialist. Specialists have a very special place in my heart. Fast Redeploy taught me how Arknight is so vastly different compared to any other tower defense game. Puller and Hooker are just two sides of the same coin. I love Mizuki's armpits. I heard they are very soft. Also, what exactly is a geek? Merchants are merchants, they eat up my DP, but honestly I love them for what they do, especially Lee. Like, I just love the fact that the game makes furry and scalies look so cool. I mean, Lee in particular, I just love his way of talking and his laid back way of handling things. He is definitely my favorite specialist operator. Do I have to mention how often I just cheesed stages with Lee? This dude is so fun to use. Then we have Trap Masters. God, I wish I had the royalty. Robin carried me hard in CC9. Then there are the Doll Keepers. There is only one Doll Keeper for me and that is Spectre the Unchained. Okay, okay, ju just kidding. I, I didn't forget about Banner and Kazemaru. They, they don't ex- I, I, but, but I don't use them. They, they don't exist to me. Alright, last, last but not least, the most important role for me. And that is just my personal opinion. The best class in the game. Support. I just love everything about Link. Her design, her E2 art, all of her skills, her voice, her story, just everything. I love her. I love the fact that you can solo a ton of stages with her. Yes, cry about it. Cry about the fact that a support operator is breaking the game. And after Ling, I love Skulter. Alright, I think that's it. I really enjoy the game. I think I will, I will keep playing it and make content about it. What about you? Do you enjoy the game? How did you get into it? Let me know in the comments.